Next in the workflow comes the three adjustment layers, curves, levels, and hue and saturation. And I'm going to add them in a reverse order so that they stack up in the opposite order. So I'm going to click down there at the bottom, hue and saturation, and just click enter, hit, hit OK. We'll come back to it after. I just want to put the layers on there. And then levels. And when that comes up, you can click OK. And then curves. Now there's a lot of overlap in functionality between curves and levels. So we're going to keep each one compartmentalized so each one will do what it does best. For instance, in levels, the center slider will achieve exactly this result. or this. The right slider in levels will achieve this. And the left slider in levels will achieve this. So because of this overlap, I'm going to put a point right in the middle at 128, 128. And if you don't hit it just right, you can move it until it says 128, 128. And then I'll click OK. You can see the little icons. If you want them bigger, go down to the bottom, palette options, and if you choose the next larger size, you'll see context-sensitive thumbnails. We'll just leave it like that. Now each one of these adjustment layers automatically come with a mask. We're going to use this for overall, or what I like to call global color adjustment, so you don't really even need the mask. You can always add a mask later just by clicking here anyway if you decide you need one to tone it down in some area. So I'll just do it like this. It's not imperative or anything, but this is a reminder that these are overall color adjustments. And then later we'll use some of these, but just for isolated areas. We begin with levels. We double click, and it brings up the histogram, which should look the same as the one up here. It takes a moment to build it. And we'll keep it like right here. You can hit Control 1, 2, and 3 to see the separate channels. When you're in the RGB channel, moving any of these sliders is the same equivalent of going into each component channel and moving that corresponding slider the same amount. So this is our, our darks and lights. If you hold down the Alt key, it will show you where the clipping is occurring in what channel, as you can see, like this. And that also works for the highlights. Just hold the, hold the Alt key down. At any time in any of these dialogues that you get some settings and you just want to reset it, hold the Alt key down and the Cancel will change to Reset. Click that and it puts everything back. Now we're going to use the levels not only to lighten or darken an image, but to do the majority of the color correction. If you go into the component channels, you've got the red, green, and blue. Now to make a comparison, the, the green channel, if you move that center slider, is equivalent to the tint when you're in camera raw. But it's very heavy handed, as you can see, it goes from magenta to green. You'll find that most often, you won't be messing with this at all. And you can think of the red and blue channels together as comprising the temperature. Each one of these kinds of affects the other. You just move the center slider to get the shift. Let me reset this. We'll focus the remainder of this segment on just the levels dialog and how you approach this. You can hit Control 1, 2, and 3. Now, if you notice considerable bald patches here in the histogram on the left and right. You can safely move the slider somewhat, but leave a little bit extra. No use taking it to the limit, because if any of these are too different from the others, any one channel, it can alter the image. It makes it look a little bit whacked if you're not careful. I can move that safely there. The idea behind this is we're going to bring it up in the shadows to very dark, and then the highlights make those lighter, approaching 255, but not quite. And you could also just move this in, but the thing is, is each channel will have its own peculiarities. So the uh, way I like to look at it is you don't need the 
the red channel, for instance, to pay for the sins of the blue channel, if one of them is, uh, has got a little breathing room to move that slider. So what I recommend to you is start off with these individual channels, red, green, and blue, and just look for if there's a way you can safely move in these outer sliders. As long as it's just a ball patch, if I see any line at all, I'm going to leave it alone because that means clipping if I move that slider into there. We'll do that with each one of these. Just be conservative. If there was a ball patch that extended all the way to here, I wouldn't move this all the way to here. I would just move it enough just as a compromise because we're going to do the rest with curves. Curves will accentuate those values, bringing them lighter and darker, but it will still maintain a little breathing room, as I like to call it, so that no clipping occurs. So we don't need to take this to the limit when we're right here. Once you've got this done, we're going to change the, the color of the temperature. You just move the center slider on each one of these channels and see, get it to where, it, where you like it until it looks right. I found that if you make the image a little smaller, it actually helps because, maybe not that small, because uh, you see the big picture and you don't get caught up into details. You just kind of want to stare through the image, move the slider until it's just got that that perfect mix. See, like here everything's getting red but the grass is starting to suffer. Here the grass is plenty green but the reds are starting to suffer. So you find that that perfect middle ground where both are represented just right. I'll start with the red channel and then go to the blue channel and move that. Uh, it's important to know that when you're in red it's between red and cyan. When you're in the blue channel you're dealing between blue and yellow and when you're in the green channel it's between magenta and green and you'll find that usually you just leave the green alone I'll put that you can just type the numbers in there too if you want let's go to the blue channel and you can kinda of move it back and forth as you stare through the image and you just kinda of hover a little bit to the left a little bit to the right until you just find where it's just just perfect See here, I've got enough blue in there where you can kind of see the blue from the sky reflecting on the, on these little dogs. Now what I like to do, any anytime you get to a point where you like what you've got, just click OK, and then you can open it up again. And this way I'm free to experiment further, such as let's say I want to screw around with it, and then if I decide I don't like it, I just hit Cancel, and then it reverts to the previous saved version. So let's just wrap this up now. We got our individual colors adjusted like we like. And now we use the, the center slider. From here on in, in our workflow, this becomes our brightness adjuster. Bright and dark. By the way, this slider in the center is the equivalent to what I showed you earlier in curves when you take that one point and move it down. And I leave that pointing curves set to the middle at 128, 128, because anytime I need to adjust brightness, I'm going to do it from here. So you get it just about like you like. You might have to come back to it later anyway, and click OK. And here's the before and the after.